Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how to use Lowminer 1.63 in Windows and set up the config for Casper Radiate or pretty much any other heavy core intensive coin that may pop up. First we're going to head over to the Lowminer GitHub and get the latest release. From here, you can see Windows Zip, so that's the one you're going to want to get. Once it's downloaded, you're going to unzip it, go into the folder, and you'll see this is what it looks like. Uh, always make sure to go to properties on the actual EXE and set it to mine uh, as administrator, or else the, could, the overclocks will not work. Next, scroll down to you find mine cast. You can either copy this or just edit this file if you'd like. And you see here, beginning of user editables, end of user editables. Everything you need to do is going to be between these two and do not touch anything else. So now you're going to need to go over to whatever pool you decide to use. We'll go to Wooly Pooly just because it seems to be the one that everyone's using right now. Once you're at Wooly Pooly, you're going to pick whatever coin you want. So if you wanted Cas Caspa, if you want R RxD, Radiant, you can pick Radiant. For this one, I'll show you uh, Caspa. So we'll click Connect. It's going to ask you some questions. PPL, because you don't want to be solo mining unless you do want to be solo mining. Uh, for me, Canada. So I'll select Canada. Select my miner. We're going to be using Lowell Miner. Wallet address. This is where you would put in Caspa, colon, and whatever your... Wallet addresses, worker name, put test video for this, uh, and then you can take this here and we'll go back over to our mining software. Since we are using the .bat file, that command won't work perfectly, but it will have all of the information we need. So I'll just paste it into a different notepad just for now. So set pool equals, you're going to want to take the exact pool here pool.ca.wooly paste it in here colon your port is going to be 3112 then you would put your wallet address which is here and worker name so copy both of these you're obviously your wallet address is going to look much more like this paste that into here after the wallet equals and this is the very important part your extra parameters now, if we check again on the low minor GitHub, see release notes, significantly improved Caspa only mining efficiency on Turing Amper GPUs. If you scroll down a little more, you'll see dash dash C clock for core locking and dash dash M clock for memory locking. That's what we're going to need. So back over here to the Caspa mining. And in this extra parameters, you can remove the dash dash API port and put this exact thing here. So dash dash C clock 1470 dash dash M clock 810. Save the file. And you would double click on this mine cast. So at this point, we are halfway to where we want to be. The core lock is going to be set. The mem lock is going to be set, but you need a way to use the core offset, which is basically what's going to decrease the power use for you. To do this, you're going to want some kind of overclocking software for GPUs. Uh, the gold standard across the board is pretty much MSI Afterburner. Um, go and download Afterburner. Uh, it won't look exactly like this. If you want it to look exactly like this, you just have to click on settings, user interface, and this is the MSI Cyborg Red skin, which is my favorite personally. And you can see this is what the mem and core clock are running at currently. Everything is set to stock. So the fans are auto, memory is set to zero, core is set to zero, power is set to 100%. So you're going to want to start up that miner.
So once it starts, you can see locked core, locked memory. If you go back to MSI, it'll now have changed to the locked core and the locked memory that we selected. Okay, let this run for a few minutes just to give you a better idea here. So we're getting um, somewhere around 385, 390 at 73 watts, which is an efficiency of 5.226, which is not bad, but we can do much better. So this is where you'll go over to your MSI Afterburner, uh, and this is going to basically be completely different depending on what GPU you have. So if you have 10 series cards, put it at 100. If you have 20 series cards, you can put it at 250 and then walk it back by 10 until you get it stable. If you have uh, 30 series cards, you can put it at 350, maybe 400, and again, walk it back until it seems stable. Uh, I found a pretty good balance for my 3070 is 350. So I'll put in 350 as the core clock, hit enter, apply that, and now we should automatically see this power drop. See already down to 66 and we'll let it run for another one and it should be dropped even more. Okay, gave it a few more minutes to stabilize. You can see we're still at around that same 389, 390 mark. Our power has dropped to 54 watts and the efficiency is way up to 7.13. Uh, and keep in mind, this is with me recording and currently using the desktop. So this could be even better if you just let it sit dormant. If you did have multiple GPUs, right here, there'd be a little drop down where you could select different GPUs and you could set them to whatever you wanted per GPU in case you have a mixed rig. You could choose to not have the fans set to auto and just put them at something locked if you'd like. If you want to do that, you just unselect auto, put whatever fan speed you want, enter. Uh, and as you can see, this is sitting at 38 degrees Celsius. This card is very cool. You could probably bump this fan down to 40 and, and even then save a couple more watts. Now, remember, every card is going to be different. I've set mine to 350 just as a nice round number, but people are getting a good efficiency on 400, and some people are not even able to hit 350. So it's really going to depend on what card you have. Just do some experimenting until you find a sweet spot. I let it go a little bit without the recording software open. As you can see, my numbers went up a little bit, 451 at 57 watts. And one of the beauty of doing this in Windows is that you can mess with this and you don't have to restart your miner. So you can see it changing on the fly. Uh, it seems like anytime you change a setting in here, it will drop your hash rate for uh, a couple seconds, but then it'll jump right back up. Thanks for watching, everybody. Good luck and stay profitable.